a blessed afternoon to everyone, blessed day, and uh, happy feast day uh, to all the devotees of Santo Nino all over the world. Where uh, there are Filipinos, Santo Nino is there. No? I have seen this in, in Rome. In fact, doon ko mas nakilala ang ang devosyon ng Santo Nino sa, sa Rome, sa Madrid among Filipinos because in the north, hindi ka masyadong malakas yung devosyon kagaya ng Cebu no? or other parts of the, of the world of the Philippines where we have the uh, uh, a very strong devotion and festival and uh, feasting while in the north we do not have much. Doon ko na mas lalong nakilala itong uh, debusyon sa banal na sanggol sa among our kababayans in Rome no may malaking celebration or in uh, also in Madrid in Spain no the uh, this beautiful tradition of celebrating the holy childhood of Jesus Christ. If we uh, contemplate this particular dimension of the uh, mystery of Christ, his childhood or youthhood, it is notable that we do not have much data about this in the Gospels. The only instance where we find a Jesus, a young Jesus, is what we have heard in the Gospel today. No. We do not find much of uh, stories about uh, Jesus' childhood while there are stories outside the so-called canonical Gospels, you know, other uh, accounts outside the, the Bible, but uh, in the Bible itself, we do not find much. You know? And uh, here, as I've said, the only time we find a uh, story about a young Jesus at the age of 12, you know, in the temple, discussing with the learned you know, topics about uh, probably religion and uh, other than this, we do not have stories about this particular phase of Jesus' earthly life. What we have as Santo Nino is according to historians is based on a vision by Santa Teresa of Avila in the Middle Ages, the 16th century particularly. So the Santo Nino is part of this popular religious tradition of Christianity. Such importance and popularity of this devotion that uh, it captured the heart and imagination of people. And one of the proofs, as, as one author said, that one thing is indeed popular and has captured the mind, the heart of people is when this image is appropriated or is expressed to identify themselves with this someone. That's why we have so many images, representations of the Santo Nino, aside from the traditional image of Santo Nino of Cebu, Santo Nino de Fraga, 
Santo Niño de Pandacan, de Tondo, etc. There are also other Santo Niño expressions or representation of Santo Niño as a policeman, as a basurero, as a, uh, what, name it, teacher, etc. That shows that indeed, the Santo Niño is very near. It has, he has become part, a very important part of our devotion, of our, rela the, our relationship with God himself through his son. What we see, for example, what is the message of Santo Nino? We see from the first reading today the prophecy of Isaiah and that birth of a child and it is given to us, it says there. And upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever, and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. In the mind of the church, reading this, they, the church saw that this text is fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ, who became a child and who grew up as the reading, gospel reading today. He grew up in age, in wisdom, it says at the end of the gospel today. What can we learn from uh, the child Jesus? In the gospel today, it says, Jesus went down with his parents and obedient to them. Whatever our chronological age may be, we will always be children of our Heavenly Father. And we always, always need to be reminded of this truth so that we may have always that openness, docility, and obedience of a child like the child Jesus to his parents. Minsan kasi naisip natin pag... No, we, when we were young, no, gusto nating maging uh, malaki na. At sometimes, I do not know if, if uh, my Tagalog understanding, kasi may, may gulang na ang tao sa may gulang o magulang, malapit dun sa magulang na tao, marunong manggulang. Manggulang sa kapwa. Maybe uh, a reminder is that that we should always be like us, that we do not lose this, our status as children of God. Magiging lolo, lola, presidente kaman, or uh, manager, etc. We will always be children of God. And it is important to remember this because in being a child we can please God. Secondly, that we allow ourselves to be challenged also by the young to marvel and enjoy their giftedness 
like what Mary did. She kept all these things in her heart. And this is uh, a reminder also for us who are older to discover the giftedness of young people. And many times we do not have, uh, we re recognize that we are not, we do not have the monopoly of the truth. So it is important also that we, we learn to listen to them, celebrate their giftedness, their youth, and be inspired by them. Thanks to a greater consciousness of the world today, of, of nations today promoting, for example, the, uh, the children's rights no. that uh, we help promote, for example, this, uh, a greater good service to the young people. Uh, some days ago, I heard that there is the, that the president of the Philippines signed a, a law facilitating, for example, the adoption of people. Minsan yung nakakatigil ng pag adapt ng mga bata daw na pwedeng i-adapt ay dahil sa bureaucracy. So, we hope that with this, now, would uh, help provide the framework for a better care for those who are not fortunate to have their parents now and be given the opportunity to be cared for by others now and uh, so the point is that uh, we ask and we are challenged by also by by the youth by the children and we rejoice we as older people to learn also from them. No. In the 60s, 70s, there was a 70s, there was a, an aggressive uh, in so many countries of, uh, in the world of uh, controlling population. Very aggressive one child policy of some countries, etc. Now, such countries are promoting, giving incentives to couples to have more children because there is now an imbalance, for example, in the population. Ang daming matatanda. Kakaunti ang mga bata, so sinong papalit sa kanila? Sinong magpapakain later on sa mga kawawa na yung mga working class? No? Kasi ang taas ng kanilang taxes na babayaran para i-sustain yung mga matatanda. So you see the, the uh, what they call the demographic winter no? that is also having no? detrimental effects to our society, to our life no? uh, as a people. So the message is children are gifts of God also. And uh, our promotion for uh, a, this, the good of children is our vote also for a better future for the world. Dear friends, we ask the Lord the Santo Nino to help us retain that openness of a child. As I've said, we before God, we will always be children, child of God. We are. I am a child of God. And it's good to be reminded of this always. 
nung buhay pa yung mga parents ko, every time I go home, it is, it was a, how do I say, a sovereign experience because when I arrive, nasa bahay ako, I'm just Ronnie. Hindi ako pari. I mean, in the sense of that, well, I need to do the dishes, help, because I'm just one we, among them. I am. It's good to be re, to be reminded of our status as children of our parents, no? At least for me, and this is also a good and sovereign moment for me, and it is important that we retain, we maintain this idea, this attitude that we are all children of God. And secondly, that we rejoice in the giftedness of children and help promote a better future for younger generations. The great uh, Fyodor Dostoyevsky, author, Russian author would say, the soul is healed by being with children. A beautiful quote, reminder. The soul is healed by being with children. Amen.